Welcome to this Pharos Fundamentals video covering the background and history of DMX. DMX emerged from the world of stage lighting, with lighting rigs like the one you see here, featuring hundreds of incandescent lamps, becoming increasingly common. All of these lights were controlled individually, through dimmers, receiving analog signals from a lighting console. As installations grew, the sheer number of control cables needed became impractical, and a more efficient approach was sought. This led to the adoption of digital control. As technology advanced, lighting fixtures evolved, demanding more control information for parameters like colour, position and gobos. Digital control signals could be transmitted directly from the lighting console to the fixtures. This digital control method became what we now know as DMX. In architectural settings, rather than having a technician standing behind a lighting console, Standalone controllers, such as those offered by Pharos, send digital control signals to lighting fixtures. Nowadays, these are typically LED fixtures with multiple emitters, such as red, green and blue, red, green, blue and white, or even more different emitters. Each of these requires individual control via the DMX signal from the lighting controller. At first, various companies used their own different digital lighting control solutions, which weren't necessarily compatible with fixtures or controllers from other manufacturers. It wasn't until 1986 that a standard was created by the United States Institute of Theatre Technology, allowing compatibility between equipment from different manufacturers. Ownership of the standard has since transferred to ESTA, the Entertainment Services and Technology Association, and has seen a handful of updates and improvements. The DMX standard is officially recognized as ANSI E111-2008 by the American National Standards Institute. In the next video, we'll look at cabling and routing for DMX systems.